So we see a lot of alcoholism in yes. our community. Is there a relation between alcoholism and cardiomyopathies and CHF? Yes, absolutely. So alcohol is a toxic for the heart, but there is a genetic predisposition for this. So most individuals that are alcoholic, uh, you know, they may develop liver dysfunction, and that's pretty uh, very well correlated with the dose uh, of alcohol intake. When it comes to the heart, it, there is a lesser correlation. Patients that are not heavy drinkers may still have uh, an alcohol, uh, alcohol-related cardiomyopathy. And some patients are heavy drinkers that do not develop alcohol-related cardiomyopathy. Now, the alcohol can also trigger certain arrhythmias. So alcohol could increase the chances of having irregular rhythms from the top chamber of the heart, causes uh, metabolite, uh, um, electrolytes abnormalities that also lead to arrhythmia. So uh, there is a well-known condition called holiday heart syndrome. After a weekend of drinking, you may develop an arrhythmia. Uh, and so these are things that the alcohol could cause to the heart. But there is an alcohol-related cardiomyopathy. Uh, it's not dose-related. And in patients in general who do have systolic dysfunction, we recommend uh, being avoiding alcohol. Because if you add in top of the weakness that you, they already have a potential toxic effect from alcohol, then that causes more problems. So. so it doesn't seem to be how much you drink. It's if you happen to be that person who has the predisposition alcohol is going to end up being really bad for your heart. Correct. And, and, and the good news is that many patients with alcohol cardiomyopathy, if they are identified on time and they stop drinking, there is a good chance of recovery. It's one of those where there could be a good chance of recovery. Once there is fibrosis in the heart and the weakness has been established, so then the recovery will be harder. So for someone who likes red wine, that'd be me, um, there's got to be some good news somewhere. Please tell me there's something good about red wine. So, so we, there are some theoretical benefits of red wine. Uh, you know, it appears to have some antioxidant properties. Uh, it may increase the good cholesterol. Uh, but when you look at the studies that have looked at antioxidants to see whether or not they protected the patients from having a coronary events, there was no clear benefit. Uh, so, but some epidemiolo epidemiological data suggests that a glass of wine in the evening may be protected. No strong data one way or the other. But it doesn't seem to be harmful unless you fall into that group. Right. That, right. you know, idiopathic, you know, idiosyncratically, they have mm -hmm. a tendency of having weakness in the heart muscle from it. So you mentioned holiday heart. And uh, is there a particular arrhythmia that you see more common with holiday heart? Atrial fibrillation. Atrial. Uh, atrial fibrillation is the one that you see more commonly. You could see also atrial floater or AVNRT, uh, but these other two require of a sort of a, uh, electrical predisposition to it. So uh, in the regular individuals, usually it's atrial fibrillation that you will have. And that's more of an issue with binge drinking as opposed to chronic drinking? Uh, it's Yes, uh, at any time that you have an episode of binge drinking, you uh, could cause uh, this balance enough to trigger the atrial fibrillation. In our area here, uh, there, are, there is so much of allergies, and whenever you take uh, anti-allergic medications that have pseudoephedrine, so, and this is a typical scenario in wintertime, so mm -hmm. individuals who start taking uh, Allegra D or Sirtec D, whatever has pseudoephedrine on it, and they are already putting themselves in a higher, uh, in a lower threshold to develop an arrhythmia, and if on top of that, you get caffeine and then you get alcohol, then you have a good chance of triggering an arrhythmia such as atrial fibrillation. So in that case, let's say uh, someone's never had arrhythmia before. Um, they have been binging on both uh, pseudoephedrine and then drink a lot. They go into AFib, let's say we get them cardioverted. Are they then, and they're back in a sinus rhythm, are they then at a higher risk for determining, uh, developing AFib later on? In the long term, probably okay. yes. It's Even yes, the absence of alcohol. Yes, a way to, so, so to have atrial fibrillation, you also need to have a substrate to it. Uh, and these were triggers on top of the substrate. Uh, if you remove those triggers, you may be all right. But over, over the years, then when you get to be 60 and you develop hypertension and your heart now is stiff, now you have your threshold again comes lower and anything could trigger it and it could be a spontaneous. But.